Recently, as I sat in my flat, I heard the familiar coo of an owl. Excitedly, I recounted to my flatmate the many ways this bird call shaped my memories, how the sound brings a softness to my heart, reminding me of my childhood and long summer days. Of rising early before others, as the sun starts to shine through the cracks in the clouds, sneaking out to play in the street as the world starts to come alive. Of late twilight evenings, having explored outside all day, getting lost amongst the fields, the owl calling me to head home in time for dinner. As I grew older, this owl call would transport me back to the ease and innocence of childhood. And for a moment, I would be there. It would feel so special to hear this owl, especially during the day, or on a busy street, like it was my guardian angel bringing me a gift of home. As I finished recounting my tale, I felt the familiar glow of nostalgia rise up inside, before smiling at my flatmate. She laughed, and in one fell swoop, heartlessly shredded my childhood with words like sharp talons. Jess, that's not an owl, that's a pigeon. He just wants to be fed, to crawl into bed and gorge on Zeds into sleep. But instead, insomnia creeps under the duvet and into our lair, then smashes the air with his big silver gong. My monster weeps into twisted sheets while sheep cavort in our brains. But insomnia refrains from leaving the sleep-thieving little prick. Monster says he feels sick, so we make some lists of A, B, C's. Try to name all the types of trees we've never seen, or places we've never been, like Alcatraz, Biggleswade, Cairo. At quarter to four, he can't take any more, so I buzz for the night nurse. In she lumbers to numb us with her vial of gloop, the sweet green soup that makes eyelids droop in the gloom as I hold my monster. He curls his toes, his breathing slows, till he's under in the corner. Insomnia stands with a face of thunder. If my house should crumble, roof cave in, still I will shelter like a bird. Though roots push through the tiled floor, though honeysuckle tumble through shattered panes, I will nest in fissured walls, furred with moss and meadow sweet, only to hear the river rapids roaring below only to breathe the scent of jasmine, clinging, delicate and feral, to the cliffs of my home.
Jimmy stood in front of all his peers and making them strain to hear, whispered, I'm coming home. Jimmy stood in front of all his peers and cleared his throat and proclaimed, I am broken. I have been sapped like a rubber tree and all that is precious drained into one bucket of blood. Nose to tail, he took a taxi up the Ecclesall Road. With its familiar smell, something between a persisting smoker and perfume puke and air fresheners. There wasn't enough room in the back. He sat with his knees wide and remembered fingering you one drunken night all top hat and tails and long black split skirt. Great days. Getting off on being watched. When he arrived at the door, his hands shivered as he turned the key. But once unlocked, so many things unlocked. He summoned his courage and burst through. I'm home, he proclaimed, and I'm fucking gorgeous. His grandmother told him there is no need for such language and passed him a cup of tea and said, sit down next to me and tell me about everywhere you've been. Later, his peers stopped him in the hallway like water behind a dam and in their clear and well-spoken voice they inquired, so Jimmy, is this art? His reply was in whispers. Are you drinking from the bucket? Jimmy enjoyed being pompous. Because if you are, then this is most certainly art. <laughs>